Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Windows 11. And specifically, we're going to talk about how to determine whether your computer is compatible with Windows 11. And if it's not, what steps do you need to go through to upgrade your hardware to make it Windows 11 compatible? Now, if you're like me, I've been around uh, computers since the 70s. I've been an electrical engineer over 45 years. I was working on computers before there was a Windows, when we had DOS and we had mainframe computers. This is the first time that I can recall that we have had to upgrade hardware in order to run an operating system. Now, of course, um, you may have to add some RAM to get newer operating systems to work, but here we're talking about CPUs and even motherboards that might have to be replaced. So we're going to talk about why we need to do that and also what steps can you take to do that. So Windows 11 hardware compatibility is going to be required by October of 2025. That's when support for Windows 10 is going to end and Windows 11 is going to be the new thing that's going to be getting all the updates. So why is that? Well, it's mainly about security. And if you go down the rabbit hole in the Windows websites, they ultimately direct you to this Windows Insider blog of June 2021 that is supposed to explain why this hardware upgrade and hardware compatibility for security is required. And June 2021, Windows 11 raises the bar, which means nothing, for security by requiring hardware that can enable Protections like Windows Hello, device encryption, virtualization-based security, hypervisor protected code integrity, and secure boot. Now, if that means something to you, congratulations. Uh, it sounds like a lot of hand-waving to, I think, most people. And they ultimately say the combination of these features has been shown to reduce malware by 60% on tested devices. To meet the principle, all Windows CPUs have blah, blah, blah. So they, they're, it seems like they're pointing to a reduction in malware by 60% on tested devices, which means, to me, it sounds like a lot of hand-waving. It's a coin toss. 60% of malware, you know, maybe if you're running, you're already running an anti-malware software like most of us are, maybe this is irrelevant. So in typical Microsoft fashion, I've been around Microsoft since the beginning, their recent history in security and reliability has been absolutely atrocious. Whether this means anything or whether, as a skeptic might think, maybe it's just designed to get us to buy new hardware, I don't know. But this seems like a lot of hand-waving. So um, the question is, do you really need it? The other side of it is that, you know, security has become really, really important in recent years because we have state-sponsored hackers who have become really, really good at figuring out ways to hack software. And it seems like most of the software vendors have been reactionary rather than proactive. And they're kind of responding to stuff that being blindsided by security threats. So it's up to you whether you want to believe that this is going to make any difference or not. For those of us who want to, who'd rather be safe than sorry, uh, this is probably going to be an issue that at some point you're going to have to upgrade your hardware. So what are those requirements for Windows 11? What are those hardware requirements? Well, here is a list. You can go onto the Microsoft website and you can get this list. This is kind of a shortened list. Um, processor CPUs, we need one gigahertz or faster with two or more cores. And it has to appear on the list of approved CPUs that we'll talk about. You need at least four gigabytes of RAM. Again, when you update an operating system, typically you might have to upgrade RAM. And that's understandable because it's got more stuff in it. Typically, I use eight gigabytes as a minimum. Storage, 64 gigabytes or larger. System firmware, UEFI, which is Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, a modern version of the PC BIOS. And secure boot capable. Also TPM, Trusted Platform Module version 2.0. Again, you're going to have to see that you're compatible with that. Graphics card, compatible DirectX 12 or later, WDDM 2.0 driver. Display, um, if you don't have a big enough display, the user interface of Windows may not be fully visible if you care. And then Internet Connectivity and Microsoft Accounts. Windows 11 Home Edition requires internet connectivity and a Microsoft account to complete device setup on first use. Now, for those of us who've been trying to avoid Windows Microsoft accounts for all these years, 
Hopefully, you won't have to use this Microsoft account. We'll see, but um, personally, I'm going to try to avoid that. And then Windows version for upgrade, your device must be running Windows 10 version 2004 or later. Now, in my case, I've got three desktops. And I'm going to go through briefly what I went through to find out to what extent these are compatible because you might go through the same type of thing. So I've got three desktops. I've got a primary here on the left and these two, which are kind of backups. The first one is um, I built from scratch using components. I've got an MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard with a Ryzen 7 1700. And that's from March 2017 I built it, which is about six years old, which really isn't very old. I've got another Dell, which is a pre-built Dell, Intel i7-6700, released July 2015, which is eight years old. And I've got an HP pre-built, Intel i7-4790, released in May 2014, which is nine years old. Now, again, I'm an electrical engineer. I do software development. I do engineering software, computer graphics. I have a lot of requirements for hardware. However, even with a nine-year-old computer, these are fine for me. I think most people in this um, environment of computers are a lot of hobbyists who, whose primary interest is in playing video games. I don't do video games, but if you do video games, you become the type of person who needs the latest and the greatest to get an extra one frame per second on your video game. But personally, these are absolutely fine for me. My latest computer is an 8-core, 16-thread, 3 gigahertz. Um, I've got two big GPUs on this, so they work fine for all my engineering software. To have to upgrade any of these is absolutely ludicrous. They work fine for me, but welcome to the new world. So I went through and I looked at these three computers and did a brief inspection to find out, are these compatible with Windows 11? And the sad result is none of them are compatible. All three of these have hardware issues that make them incompatible within, with Windows 11. So my first, my primary computer, my MSI Gaming Pro Carbon with a Ryzen 7, 8-core, 16-thread from March 2017, turns out it needs a new CPU. And we're going to go through the process I'm going to need to do to go through all the steps that are going to be required to find a new CPU and what's compatible and uh, what's going to work with my hardware. The other two not only need new CPUs, but they also need new motherboards. So, you know, a lot of people are going to be faced with this where you might need either a new CPU or a new CPU and a new motherboard. And this is going to get kind of expensive. Of course, that's why there are a lot of people now who want to play with a, a shiny new operating system and they're trying to figure out ways to install it on incompatible hardware. Um, they may want to change their minds in, in the upcoming years and go through and actually upgrade the hardware like we're going to show you here. So. To find out if your PC is compatible, the first thing you need to do is you need to download and run the Microsoft PC Health Check app. Now, I'm going to assume if you're doing this, you know how to search for PC Health Check app and download it. And what you're going to get when you run it is you're going to get this little application, PC Health Check, PC Health at a Glance. And it lists a little bit about your computer. My, com my main computer is called Supercomputer, 64 gigs of RAM, one terabyte drive. And notice it tells you it's six years old. Maybe that's just to make you feel bad that you've got an old computer that needs to be upgraded so you'll buy new hardware. Who knows? Once you've got this, you've got this introducing Windows 11. Let's check if this PC meets the system requirements. So I'm going to click check now. And... The answer is this PC doesn't currently meet Windows 11 system requirements. Aha! See all results. So here is a scrollable list of the results. It says the processor isn't currently supported for Windows 11. It does support Secure Boot. TPM 2.0 is enabled. There is at least 4 gigs. I've got 64 gigs. The system disk is 64 gig or larger. And the processor has two or more cores. So with this particular computer, I don't have a supported CPU. Now, that's fine, but what am I going to do in order to, at some point, upgrade this CPU? I need to find a CPU that is, first of all, compatible with Windows 11. So how do I do that? Well, I go to this uh, learn.microsoft.com 
and search for Windows 11 supported processors. In my case, it's an AMD processor. If you have an Intel, you'll do the same thing for Intel processors. And then you scroll down, it's got a list of all the Windows 11 supported processors. Athlon, Athlon Gold, Athlon Pro, Epic, Ryzen 3, Ryzen 3 Pro, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 5 Pro, Ryzen 7. And I've got a Ryzen 7 1700. So if you go here, the first AMD Ryzen 7 is a 2700. So I'm off by one. So here is the list of all the Ryzen 7 processors. So now that you know what are compatible, you also have to figure out what's compatible with your motherboard. So now you have to take all this information and go to the motherboard website. Here's my MSR, MSI Gaming Pro Carbon, uh, the MSI website, and I can look at compatibility with the motherboard. And here's the CPUs. They've also got memory, VGA, storage, and compatible devices. But I can click on CPU and go through all of the processors that are compatible with my motherboard. So I've got, <laughs> I've got 10 pages. So now I can compare those two lists. What else do I need to do? Well, I know it's compatible with Windows 11. I know what CPU is compatible with the motherboard, but I also want to get similar specs. So I need to compare the specs of what I have existing to what a new CPU might be. So we're going to have to compare the specs and make sure that I, you know, if I've got eight core 16 threads, I want to go to one that has eight core 16 threads or better, right? Now I can also go to the AMD website and look at all the specifications and make a note of those so I can compare the existing CPU with the upgrade CPU. But then once I've got that, I need to find out, is it available and has, does it have a decent price? So I can go onto Amazon and see what's available. And you can see we don't, we have like a 57, a 77. Ah, here's a 2700X and it has a cooler. And that's going to cost me $230. So I may choose to do this or I may choose to spend less money, $192 for a 5700. So you're going to have a lot of choices to make, but there's also other things you need to consider. Now, the other thing is a new cooler needed. So we're going to have to make sure that if we get a new CPU, does it also have 65 watts or is it maybe 100 watts, which means we need to get a new cooler. So once we've figured out what the new processor is going to be, then we're going to have to figure out, do we need a BIOS update? Because your BIOS may not work with an upgraded CPU. So is the BIOS update required? But if you're going to update the BIOS, you may also need to update the chipset driver. So you're going to have to go to the manufacturer website and check to see if there's a BIOS update required and if there's a chipset driver update that's required. Now, in my case, for I go to MSI Gaming Pro Carbon drivers and downloads, and you can see in the last six years, there have been, from 2017, there's been one, two, three, four, there's been a whole bunch of updates. And I haven't updated the BIOS. I try to avoid that as much as possible. There's even a BIOS in uh, May of 2023. So now you're going to have to update the BIOS and probably update the chipset driver. And finally, you're going to have to see if TPM 2.0 is capable on your motherboard and enabled. So you're going to have to run through and run your BIOS and check that. But these are the basic steps you're going to need to do in order to determine if your computer is capable and finding out what's a good replacement. It's really kind of complex. And um, for those of us who have multiple computers that are going to have to get updated, and even worse for businesses, corporations that are going to have hundreds or thousands of computers that have to get updated, this is going to be a really big deal. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.